So, okay, so this is con probably going to be the hardest video uh, I've ever had to make purely because I have no idea how many people I'm going to m anger or uh, disappoint with this. Um, and here I am coming at you uh, with live, unfiltered paper plane action. Um, as you can, as you can see, this this is my real face. This is this is identity revealed. I'm here uh, in front of this this thing. This is uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, we're here today to talk about the new Siege Netflix thing. <laughs> I don't know where to start with it. I made notes while I was watching it up until episode three. Um, and then I gave up because I realized a lot of my problems and the things I liked about it uh, were kind of the same thing over the course of the whole thing. Overall, um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was still pretty terrible. Let me, I'm going to grab my notes, which I left on the floor. Um, and you can't see them, but they are here. I am. I swear. <laughs> Overall, it was like the most miserable I've ever been watching a show in my life, um, which doesn't happen very often. The only other show I've been that miserable watching was like Iron Fist. If you've ever seen Iron Fist, that show is so <laughs> fucking terrible. Titans Return. Titans Return was miserable, and so was Power of the Primes which uh, has the same creative lead, <laughs> which is part of the reason I wasn't looking forward to this. I was willing to give it a chance and to, uh, you know, just see how things came out. See, see, see how it all rolled out in the end. And it was really bad. <laughs> I actually got in a bit of trouble on Twitter because I posted uh, my letterbox review, which was a one-star review, which just said, I, I, hate, I hate it, basically. And um, some people got really angry at me, and some people were just disappointed that I didn't like it. Um, which I want—I just want to say, if you did like it, um, good for you. F power to you, all that. I just—I just thought this was really not great. I'm going to tell you why. There was a plot, but to me, it felt like the plot had no uh, cause and effect to it. It felt like things were just kind of happening. Like, there was a logical reasoning to why things were happening, but none of it was, like, exciting or engaging, and none of the characters really uh, gave a shit, which in turn made me not give a shit. Um, which is actually, like, my second problem with the show. Every single... <laughs> There's a guy out there. Every single character was, like, either horribly unlikable, horribly boring or just non-existent. Like you could totally cut out some characters and nothing would really change. I like the direction they were taking with some of the, with some of the guys, um, but it just wasn't really enough for me. To me, none of the characters had a really clear cut arc. They were kind of all the same from beginning to end and any characters that did have any semblance of an arc, it was like the most generic, uh, like boring, predictable thing and I hated that <laughs> I'm really I'm like really shiny Are you seeing this why am I so shiny I'm like glistening oh my god oh it's kind of gross the animation was pretty expressive right but those moments of expressiveness only made the moments where the animation was dead as fuck stand out even more like a character would say something like omega important and like no one in the room would have a visible reaction everyone would just kind of be like i've been seeing a lot of people complain about the dialogue um and the dialogue is very bad <laughs> what i don't understand is everything I, I understood the story, I understood what was happening, but I just did not care about any of it. Because these characters are all so underdeveloped and underwritten, and some are like overwritten. Um, I found uh, Optimus and Alita's 
uh, um, uh, romantic dialogue to be very stilted, very Revenge of the Sith-like. I liked how some of the exposition was uh, explained through like natural dialogue. It wasn't like we're going to tell you the story of our people. It was like just normal conversations and you could like infer what was what they were talking about or what they meant. That was a problem I had with another Rooster Teeth show called Ruby. In Ruby, most of the exposition is delivered from like uh, a character to another character who should like know these things, but they don't, and it's really weird because like how they th these are like big things. How do they not know about like th the most important shit in the world? <laughs> I also like kind of liked Bumblebee, and Bumblebee was probably my favorite character in the whole thing because um, I found him immensely relatable because he did not want to be a part of the show um, at all, and he wanted to get the fuck out of there, I wanted to get the fuck out of there, so. With things that you, like, think are bad, right, you can, like, dissect why you think they're bad, and then use that knowledge and information to become a better storyteller, or a better writer, or a better, like, filmmaker, um, but that's just my interpretation of it anyway. And with this, I don't know if there's anything I can really take away with it, because most of its problems are, like, the most surface-level, like, shit. You can... everyone knows. Everyone knows not to do this with a character, and everyone knows not to do this in a story. It's, like, the most shallow, hollow, themeless shit that is just feigning its deepness. It's trying so hard to be mature and edgy and deep, it's none of those things. It is as deep as a fucking puddle. It's as deep as, as that thing over there. Oh shit. I found a lot of the marketing really weird and maybe it's not fair to talk about the marketing because sometimes marketing is uh, done by an outside network. A problem I had with the marketing was that it was like, this isn't your grandpa's Transformers show. This is epic. This is deep. This is whatever. But like, no, this, this like is my grandpa's Transformers show. It's trying so hard to appeal to a very specific demographic of like people in their 30s and 40s that grew up watching G1. And if this is the direction the franchise wants to keep going, like more power to them, honestly. If they're gonna keep marketing these shows and these series is 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 to the older G1 crowd, then I don't think that's gonna really like appeal to like little young kids that are getting into it and that's just so weird to me because they had cyberverse which was like this really unique um original like take on everything and it was like a really cool little way for younger audiences to get into this to get into all of this and they canned it for this they canned it for this and it's so frustrating because like I really like this franchise and I don't want to hate it, you know? I want to like it so much. I didn't go into this show wanting to hate it. It felt dead. I liked the ideas, but it just felt like they were trying to be deep instead of wanting to tell a genuine story. It felt like they didn't care overall. And that's all I gotta say about it, really. If the direction of this franchise in the future is marketing towards this older crowd of fans who just love G1 instead of trying something new, trying something different, doing anything different instead of focusing on the same like four characters every time, then like, I'm sorry, but I I'm out. I can't do this if they're just gonna keep doing this, you know? Maybe that's super entitled of me to say that because I'm just a fan. I'm not involved in any of this, but apparently, I'm not the only one that feels this way. I've been talking to like a, a bunch of other YouTubers in the community who will remain anonymous for this video. <laughs> and a lot of them kind of share the same sentiment as me. They just kind of want something different. They don't like this G1 baiting. They don't like all this, the, the same shit we've seen for the past 30, almost coming up on 40 years the same shit for 40 fucking years and it's just mind-blowing to me that they just think if they keep 
telling this story, the same story, with minor alterations every single time, they can keep making bank. There, there is so much you can do with these characters. Cyberverse proved that. IDW proved that. There, are so, there is such an, a wide array of characters that you can do so much with, and you have a shot to, like, impress hundreds of thousands of people who have fucking Netflix and this is their first impression. This is going to be outside of the Michael Bay movies. This is the first thing they're going to see of this franchise and you blew it. You absolutely blew it by just giving us the same shit but worse. If I wanted to watch G1 again, I'd watch fucking G1 again. If I wanted to see Optimus Prime and Megatron duke it out again, I would watch any other show. And that's my problem. I just want something unique, like, for once. I want something that isn't the same fucking thing, but darker, but edgier, but bo more boring error, you know? But with, like, this knowledge, knowing that they're just milking this one show dry, occasionally they acknowledge, like, Armada or, uh, or Prime animated, Oh, fuck it, they never acknowledge animated, but you, you get you get me, right? Imagine kids growing up with Red 15 or Rescue Bots, right? And they see this show, and they are seeing it as, like, this wildly different interpretation of it. And they're like, oh, cool, what, what the fuck is this? And then they watch it, and it's like, Mum, this is the most boringest shit I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> Overall... Where would I put Siege in that list I did ages ago? <laughs> um, can we get like an infographic here and it's like um, we have all the lists, the numbers? I'm going to say Siege comes in uh, right there, here. Um, I will, that's, that's where it goes. It goes in right there. I don't know. I, 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 I just, <laughs> I feel so fucked about it. I feel so fucky wacky. Anyway, so that's probably the last... Th that's all I gotta say. Um, I'll do more of these if you want me to. Uh, of just talking in front of a camera like this. In front of uh, some kind of background. I want you to look at this for a minute, right? Okay, there's like these two player models right here. Of like, I think they're just NPCs. But this actually just scared me so much. They're like, um, hold on. It's like these two NPCs of Optimus Prime and Wheeljack. And they're just talking about some shit. And it actually fucking scared me. Have they always been like this tiny? Are you, are you seeing this? Are they have they always been this small? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you're oh you're baby. You are baby. I showed you my siege review. Answer me.